Hi, welcome to Talk Straight Bible. I'm your host, Jeremiah Zantanetti. And uh, today <clears throat> we're finishing part four of Minding the Store. And we've been talking about the Word of God and how important it is as Christians to have the Word of God in your heart, in your mind, in your life. That's why we have to be rooted in Christ, not rooted so much in our salvation. Remember, I'm, well, I'm a firm believer that my salvation is secured in Christ. I know a lot of people talk about losing their salvation, and it's, and it's important. It's an, it's, it is an important topic. But when you study the scriptures firmly, you will see that most of the people that talk about uh, losing your salvation and scriptures that they use for it, there's something wrong. You will find out that most of these scriptures need to be interpreted properly. So we're going we're gonna to be looking at something that, again, the reason I mention this is because we're going to be looking at a particular verse of scripture about being rooted in Christ and is talking about being rooted in the teachings of his doctrine. Again, Romans chapter 8, verse 5 is our foundational scripture that we're talking about. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, uh, they mind the things of the spirit. And we know there is a difference between that which is fleshly compared to that which is spiritual. Jesus spoke to the disciples and he said, uh, at one point, do you want to leave me? Because many people were leaving him after he preached a tremendous message. And the message was to um, eat my flesh and to drink my blood. And so a lot of people thought he was talking about cannibalism, but he was not. He was actually referring to the life that comes from him as the bread of life and the life that would come through him because he will shed his blood on the cross. And unless we eat the bread that came from heaven, Christ and his word and his teachings, and, and be partakers of the cross, meaning that we accept the, the sacrificial uh, work that he did on the cross, then we have no life in us. And so when he told the disciples, do you want to leave me too? Peter opened up his mouth and he said, where can we go? For you have the words of eternal life. And so he said, the words that I speak to you are both spirit and life. So there is a big, there is a huge difference between that which is fleshly compared to that which is spiritual. Matter of fact, the, the prophet Isaiah said that there will come a time when men will look at something good and call it evil. And they would look at evil and call it good. We're talking about a backward generation. And in the book of Jeremiah, we see the word backward. In a few places, we see the word backward. But there were, they were a backward generation who backslid from the, from the word of God. And so there is a big difference. And a lot of people today do not know how to make out the difference between spirit and flesh. And so a lot of Christians live a very reckless life when it comes to the spirit because they don't know the things of the spirit. And therefore, when you know the words of the spirit, you will be able to detect that which is fleshly. Now, I want to go back real quick to a verse of scripture that we talked about yesterday. And um, it talks about that the natural man cannot receive the things of the spirit because they are foolish to him. They are foolishness to him. And so therefore, if a man does not understand the spirit of God, how would he understand what God is speaking? And it says, for what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of a man which is in him question mark even so the things of god knoweth no man but the spirit meaning the capital s the holy spirit of god now let's go down he says to verse 13 this is first corinthians chapter 2 verse 13 which things also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teaches but which the holy ghost teaches comparing spiritual things with spiritual and so we have to know how to compare that which is spiritual with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discern now here the natural man is not talking about a babe in christ someone who's newly born because even a babe in christ has some sense of truth 
because they understand that Christ is the Messiah, that he is the one that was to come and salvation is only through him. It's talking here about the natural man who does not have the spirit of God and because he does not or she does not have the spirit of God, they cannot discern that which is spiritual versus that which is carnality. Now we're going to go to, uh, for example, um, let's move. I'm just looking for the verse of scripture here. Okay. Give me one second, please, because I... Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Uh, we're looking at Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. Um, you know what? I'm going to go... I'm going to start in verse 6. It says, um, Colossians 2, verse 6. He says, As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as you have been taught abounding therein with thanksgiving watch this beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men after the rudiments of the world and not after christ now notice they're going to they're going to jump to verse 20 because he says the same thing in another way wherefore if ye be dead with christ from the rudiments of the world why as though living in the world are you subject to ordinances touch not taste not handle not so what does it mean to be rooted in christ this is where a lot of people say you see it means that you can be uprooted out of christ and lose your salvation there's only one problem when you think like this that if you can lose uh, your salvation, remember, that would mean that you have to come back to the state that you were before you were saved. And the problem is this. If you can go from death unto life and then go from, from life back unto death, how can you get back unto life? You can't keep going back and forth from being saved, unsaved, being saved, unsaved. It doesn't work like that. Being rooted here is not talking about losing your salvation. It is talking about being rooted in the doctrines and the teachings of Christ. My wife asked me to mention something about why we kept the title on top of every message, Put Your Face in Torah, because we did a large study on Psalms 119, the whole thing, 176 verses. So if you're new to this, please scroll down or go to YouTube, put in Talk Straight Bible, and you'll see the playlist there. Click on uh, uh, Psalms 119 and enjoy yourself. Now watch this. What's interesting is that Torah is mentioned in the New Testament. Remember that the New Testament had not been written yet. And so where was Jesus teaching from? Where was Paul teaching from? Where was Peter teaching from? They were teaching from the Old Testament. Okay, so watch this. Because Torah represents the first five books of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, they are the foundation, the foundation, the yesad, the foundation of all scripture. And that's why we keep putting our face in the Torah. Jesus, in the last part, when he gave the Sermon on the Mount, the Bible says the people were astonished at his doctrine. Notice that they were astonished at his doctrine. And Jesus, on the Sermon on the Mount, you will see not the word save, nor deliver, or things like that. Because this, these, uh, the Sermon on the Mount is basic instruction on how to stay rooted in truth, to live a life of, of joyfulness and happiness and peacefulness. The very last part that they were astonished at his doctrine, the word doctrine there, when you look at it in the Hebrew, is the word Torah. And so it is important to see that the Torah, we put our face in the Word of God. Folks, this is Torah. Torah means law of God. This is the law of God. Hallelujah to that. This is the water of life. And if you're thirsty, for, if you're thirsty and Jesus said, come to me, he will give you water. Well, what water? First, the Spirit of God was given on the day of Pentecost. And watch this. Peter stood up at this point because people thought they were drunk. And Peter stood up at this point and preached a tremendous message. 
that pricked the hearts of those that were listening. And when they said, what must we do to get saved? He said, repent and be baptized and you will receive the gift of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Now watch this. Being rooted means that you are rooted in the doctrines and the teachings of Christ. And you can go back. Please read the Sermon on the Mount. It is such a beautiful, beautiful piece of literature. As a matter of fact, they say it's the most important doc document in the whole New Testament. You won't even have the letters of Paul or any of the letters in the New Testament if it were not for the Gospels of Jesus Christ. I'm going to reframe that and say gospel because Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is the gospel. There are one gospel. There are four different um, uh, views. And if you want it, this is my view, and you're like this. My view on the, on, the, on the gospels, Matthew is the tax collector's gospel. <laughs> Mark is the suffering servant's gospel. Luke is the son of man's gospel, and John is the son of God gospel. But all of them uh, completely are perfectly in sync and they are perfectly quantized for the heart so watch this beware lest any man spoil you now the word spoil is interesting here now we're in colossians chapter uh two verse eight the word spoil is interesting because it talks about to lead away as booty i'm not talking about your butt <laughs> that's an old word booty for treasure and so watch this the, the enemy, Satan, his demons, and all his ministers of unrighteousness will try to spoil, deceive you, to carry you off the path. Now watch this, to lead away from the truth and subject to one's sway. In other words, that when you see these, these uh, ministers of unrighteousness preaching and even teaching a false way of Messiah they sway people to go their way and what happens they become deceived and paul spoke about this in ephesians as a matter of fact we're going to go back we're going to come back to colossians here but i want to go because it came to mind i want to go to um ephesians chapter 4 and we know it in verse 11 it says this and he gave some to be apostles some to be prophets some to be evangelists some to be pastor teachers or pastors and teachers well pastors should know how to teach but notice he did this for the perfecting of the saints notice that they are saints already they are saved but to perfect them for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come into the unity of the trust, faith, and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ, that we hence be no more children, watch this, tossed to and fro and carried away with every wind of doctrine, you see, this is what Paul said. He was concerned for the doctrine of the church by the slight, or the, watch this, by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie and wait to deceive. Are you hearing that? Lie and wait to deceive. How is that possible? Because these teachers are teachers that are false and they teach false doctrine. And so it's important that we strive to keep the rudiments of the doctrines of Christ in our lives. Hallelujah to that. I'm going to go back to Colossians real quick. And we're looking again at chapter 2 and verse 8. And it says here again that they spoil you through philosophy. And we know the word philosophy is interesting because it's made of two words. It's made of philo, where we can also get the word Philip or um, Philadelphia. But philo means lover of or love and then sophia which is a name sophia is a greek word also which means wisdom so these two words philosophy is lover of wisdom and we know that philosophia is something that men have in every aspect of life we know that there are people like plato and uh, uh socrates they were great philosophers and a lot of the things they said which i read some of it is true but a lot of their philosophy is rooted in humanism and a new age philosophy that is not true and sounds good. 
And so many people are deceived and they stray away from the truth because they're not teaching entire truth. Paul spoke truth. Peter spoke truth. Jesus spoke truth. And so when we read the word of God, we are to adhere ourselves to the word of God. Joshua chapter one, verse eight, you hear me say, you hear me say it over and over again. It says, it says, this book of the law shall not depart, shall not leave you, shall not leave your mouth. Now, if it's in your mouth, it has to be in your head, your mind. It has to be in your heart for you to continually speak it. And he says, it shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night. Meditate in it day and night so that you will be careful to obey all that is written in it. Then shall you make your way prosperous and have good success. And i got to tell you something, by getting into this book, I have saved myself a lot of trouble. Would you say amen to that, sweetie? Right? Because you know what? I'm constantly, I'm constantly teaching my family. I was constantly teaching my children. I don't care if they liked it or not. I was constantly, the Bible says. People say, you gave them too much Bible. I give them the Bible until they're stuffed with it. Because wherever they go now, the faith is with them. They can do stuff, but they cannot leave the faith. Christ is their savior. And philosophy, they watch, he says, be careful that, that they don't spoil you with philosophies. Watch this. And vain, vain conceit. What, what? Look at the word vain. Check this out. Empty, devoid of truth. Vessels that are empty, without gifts. Destitute of spiritual wealth. You notice Life comes from the spirit, but a reckless Christian can get in a lot of trouble because they're not rooted in the doctrines of Christ. Watch this now. Spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. We know what deceit is. After the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world. Now, what are rudiments? Rudiments, you will find that they're the basic instruction or principles of something that you need to learn. For example, if you're a drummer, they, when I was young, there were like 26 rudiments. Now there are 46 rudiments because it grows. There are 46 rudiments that a drummer learns. And rudiments basically is this. They learn how to tap, tap, tap this, the drums or the snare. You've seen people in marching bands, they have all these rudiments that they play and they sound different. And when you put them together, they sound as one. So these rudiments, uh, it's a word called syncopation. They learn how to take one beat and break it up in different parts so that it sounds different. So nothing heavy about that. Music has rudiments. Philosophy has rudiments. Uh, cooking has rudiments. So a rudiment is basically a basic instruction. And here Paul says, beware that you don't get deceived, spoiled by philosophy, vain deceit, the traditions of men and the rudiments of this world. I look at Christians sometimes and they live reckless lives. I mean, they do things that, that they shouldn't do. Okay. Some Christians still drink and get drunk and they say it's okay. Believe, check this out. There's Christians that take medication and use it as drugs, and they say it's okay because the doctor gave it to them. Now we have marijuana, which we always have, but now they're making it legal. You know, they call it recreational marijuana. And so, hey, leave my recreation alone. They got Christians smoking marijuana, and they're all bummed out. You got Christians in nightclubs dancing, and, and folks, we got to be careful. We're not supposed to be dancing for the world. People say, well, I, I go and have a good time. There's nothing wrong with having a good time. I dance in church. We have a, we have a little party among ourselves. We, listen, I dance with my wife. But we got to be careful that we don't act as the world because with that comes drinking and other things. And Christians are falling into all kinds of sins because they are not rooted in the word of God. Now watch this, most of all, this is why I am so gigantically uh, involved in discipleship. This is what Talk Straight Bible is all about. So please, in all of this, remember this, remember this, the Word of God. Here, I got to leave with this. Uh, Luke eleven twenty eight says, but he say, yea, rather blessed are they who hear the Word of God and keep it. 
So you must be rooted in truth because it is so important. Uh, let me go to another one. John chapter 8, verse 43. Why do you not understand my speech? This is Jesus speaking to the people of his day, the Pharisees and all that were around him. And because you cannot hear my word, you are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father you do. Notice this. He says you can't hear my word because your father is the one that is deceitful. Oh, man. Can I just do one more? One more, babe? Right. Come on. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 12. Apply thine, apply thine heart unto instruction and your ears to the words of knowledge. Here is the Torah, the prophets, the Psalms, the, uh, the poetry of the Bible. You know, we have Job and we have uh, the Psalms and we have Ecclesiastics and the Songs of Psalms. Whatever you do, apply your heart, apply your ear, bend your ear forward. That means that you humble your ear to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. God bless you. Have a wonderful, Spirit-filled day. And remember, mind the store. Because if you do not mind the store, someone will store something in your mind that you'll not be able to get out. Be very careful of what you listen to and what you take in. Salud.